But one of the reasons why so many people stop the fat is because of cholesterol. Would you agree with me? So let's have a look at cholesterol. It's a good time to look at it because the liver makes cholesterol. And by the way, it makes cholesterol according to the demand our body puts on it. And 80% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from glucose. And 20% of the cholesterol that the liver makes is made from fat. Now this information tells us straight away it's not the butter on the bread, it's the bread under the butter that's the problem. And that's what Atkins found. So let's have a look at cholesterol. There are two main types. One is high density lipoprotein called HDL, high density lipoprotein and LDL. HDL is usually called the good guy and the reason for that is it's the carrier. So it carries excess cholesterol from the blood back into the liver. That's why it's called the good guy. LDL is called the bad guy. But what you've got to remember is the body doesn't make anything bad. It has a role. So what is its role? Its role is that of a repairer and a rebuilder. So wherever there's damage, you're going to find LDL because it's the repairer and the rebuilder. But it, ha it plays another role. It delivers cholesterol to the brain because the brain loves cholesterol. Cholesterol to the brain. Now let me show you something briefly. We're going to look at this in further detail later. Glucose burns at four calories per gram. A calorie is a unit of energy. That's what glucose burns at. Whereas fat burns at nine calories per gram. Can you see why the brain loves fat? Because fat is going to give more than twice the units of energy and our brain cells, they're consuming fuel fast. Let's have a look at the blood vessel and how the cholesterol works in the blood vessel. Because of its low density, LDL is always on the edge. Because of its high density, HDL is always in the middle. Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who wrote the book Put Your Heart in Your Mouth, she spends the first four chapters of her book defining what damages the arterial wall. See, the arterial walls are lined with little endothelium cells and chemicals damage them. Heavy metals damage them. There's your mercuries. Also what damages them is mould and where we're exposed to, she defines, the reason why it's four chapters, she defines all the different chemicals. They're in toothpaste, they're in food. What's going to plug the holes up students? The LDL cholesterol, that's its role, that's its job. So it comes along and it plugs up. If it doesn't plug the hole up, we would bleed into the tissues. Can you see that? So they're like the band-aid. But the person doesn't realise that the mouldy house is killing them. The person doesn't realise the 4,000 cigarettes, sorry, 4,000 chemicals that are in a cigarette. So they keep smoking. They don't realise the, the danger in their washing detergents, in their toothpaste. So can you see that it's still happening? And they read an article that says, no, mercury does not kill you at all. Well, I haven't read the science. You know, it's a neurotoxin. Can you see what's happening? Something else is happening. So all through the bloodstream, we've got little molecules of protein. When, we're, when a person is on a high carbohydrate diet, releasing a lot of glucose into the blood, the blood connect, the glucose connects with the protein molecules and these little, these little combinations become sticky and they stick. And let's say we've got a narrow piece here and they come along and oops, they've caused a blockage. That is the number one cause of heart disease. That is the number one cause of a stroke is this little blockage here from the movement of the combination of the glucose and the protein making it sticky molecules. On a low carbohydrate diet, you haven't got that process happening.
Barbara O'Neill often surprises audiences by showing how simple but profound the body's inner workings really are. Yet when she explains the relationship between cholesterol and the liver, she points to an organ that acts as both a producer and a regulator of this vital substance. Many people think of cholesterol only as a dangerous fat that clogs arteries, but Barbara O'Neill highlights that this is far from the truth. Cholesterol is actually essential for life. It forms the building blocks of hormones, it is a key ingredient in vitamin D production, and it strengthens cell membranes throughout the body. Without cholesterol, the body could not function. The liver plays a central role in this process. It produces about 80% of the cholesterol found in our bodies, carefully balancing levels depending on what we eat and what our cells require. When the diet is rich in healthy fats and nutrients, the liver is able to manage cholesterol effectively. But when the diet is full of processed foods, trans fats, refined sugars, and alcohol, the liver is placed under stress. Barbara emphasizes that cholesterol in itself is not the enemy. It is the imbalance created by poor lifestyle choices that leads to trouble. This is where the difference between HDL and LDL cholesterol becomes so important. Barbara O'Neill explains it in clear terms that anyone can understand. HDL is often called the good cholesterol. Its main role is to transport excess cholesterol from the arteries back to the liver, where it can be broken down or recycled. In this way, HDL acts like a cleaner, sweeping cholesterol out of places where it should not accumulate. High levels of HDL are therefore protective and reduce the risk of heart disease. On the other hand, LDL is referred to as the bad cholesterol. But Barbara O'Neill is quick to clarify that LDL itself is not inherently bad. It is simply a carrier, transporting cholesterol from the liver to the cells. Problems arise when there is too much LDL circulating in the bloodstream, especially when it becomes oxidized by free radicals. In that state, LDL cholesterol can stick to the walls of arteries, forming plaques that lead to atherosclerosis, narrowing of blood vessels, and increased risk of heart attack or stroke. The key to healthy cholesterol levels isn't eliminating fat, but choosing the right types of fat. Whole plant foods, nuts, seeds, avocados, and omega-3 rich foods like flaxseed and walnuts contribute to liver health and increase HDL. Reducing refined carbohydrates, processed foods, and sugars is also essential, as these foods overload the liver and contribute to excess LDL. The antioxidants in fresh fruits and vegetables help protect LDL from oxidation, which reduces the risk of plaque buildup.